What's going on everyone? It's RJ from Backyard Sprouts and in today's video we're going to show you guys how we grow broccoli microgreens from start to finish all the way from harvesting to packaging to labeling and getting them ready to go and that is all coming up So the first step in growing broccoli microgreens is getting us a tray and then we're going to fill it with dirt and then we're going to go ahead and grab the seed and then we're going to go ahead and plant it. I'm going to put you guys in a weird angle here so I can go ahead and plant and put the, uh, the soil in the tray. Obviously I can't do that, I only have one hand, so bear with me here. First thing we do is grab ourselves a tray, put some soil. Get our tool and we just break it down. If there's any clumps of soil, we want that broken off. And we want to even this out a little bit. Once you're satisfied that all the big clumps have been broken up, we take our, our stamper. And we press it down. And what that does is it establishes a nice flat layer. It's nice and compact. And now let's time to water it. Give this ample water. Once we have our broccoli seeds, go ahead and spread and as in previous videos we have stated that Alex and I used to um, we used to measure these to the T guys we put it in the scale and we'd see okay broccoli 1.5 ounces of seed radish two ounces of seed you know sunflower six ounces of seed but after you've planted several hundreds of these you'd be surprised you start to establish a really good foundation and you're able to just eyeball how much seed actually is needed from here we spray it Be generous on the water because this establishes and promotes good germination. And now it's ready to get stacked. So we're gonna take this. I hope I don't drop it. I'm doing this with one hand. It goes into the blackout phase. Mother. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a tray. Doesn't matter which one. On top, grab some weights. Okay, that's it. Woo, sweating. All right, so. The next phase is obviously their blackout phase. Okay, we got our spicy salad here. We got our buckwheat and radish, and we got our broccoli grown right here. I'm gonna plant more. I just wanted to plant a tray of each so that um, we could do it for the video. But as stated in previous videos, stacking on the blackout is very, very, very important. Uh, there's a video of a guy who told you several times now he makes a video, he does a, a unstacked, and then he does a stacked. And then what ends up happening on the unstacked is they're so densely seeded that when they start to sprout, the sprouts actually push all the other seeds above the soil. So they all just die out. So germination is ultra poor. So this establishes several things when it's stacked, okay? It establishes good soil to seed contact, and then it also forces the roots to shoot downwards, establish a nice root system, 
as well as the stems. It promotes a very strong, very firm stem. So it actually starts to shoulder press these things upwards, which is super cool when, it, when I show you guys. Now broccoli stays in its blackout phase. I wanna say it's about four to five days. And of course, I sound like a broken record player, but it just depends on your region, it depends on the weather, it depends on the temperature, it depends on the humidity, it depends on how dry the air is. So all these play a factor on how long it stays in its blackout phase, but you'll know when it's time to go because it starts pushing this, this tray up, the, uh, the micros start popping out from the sides, you'll know. I'll show you guys when it's ready to get unstacked, but yeah, we'll leave them in the blackout phase. After that, the next phase is unstacking them and then watering them. So for broccoli watering, all you need is a canister and your micros. And what I do is I, I go in a zigzag formation. Whoa. <laughs> all right, forgive the MySpace angles here. But I just go in zigzag formation. Nice and easy. The important thing, guys, when you're watering your micros, doesn't matter if it's broccoli, radish, spicy salad, you have to water twice a day, okay? So my schedule is I water once in the morning, once in the evening. Don't ever let it go once. Always, always, always water them twice a day. If not, your micros will go limp. They'll get soggy. They won't grow straight and firm. They won't grow nice and lush. And they'll just flop over. Okay, so that's super important. Make sure you're always watering twice a day. These are actually getting ready to go. Little broccolis. I'll probably give them about another day. They're going nice and dense here. Uh, we'll go ahead and harvest them and package them. All right, you guys. Next step in the process of harvesting is harvesting the broccoli when it's ready to go. As always, you've heard me in enough videos, you're gonna take a very nice sharp knife and what I like to do is I like to angle it down. I like cutting it downwards, getting as close to the soil as possible, but not touching the soil. All right, so we'll get a Container. We're just gonna start cutting. Take a handful and let the knife do the work. See how important it is that that knife does all the work? I should be able to just pull this and put it on top. Now the placement of the micros in the container is just like any other micros that we've taught you guys. Make sure the micros are pointing upwards. Aesthetically it looks better and it's not as much of a cluster when chefs and uh, cooks go to grab them because they're not all intertwined. As we've stated in previous videos, normally when we used to do this back in our younger years, AKA last year, when we would harvest and package, they would be all jumbled up inside the packaging. And this is terrible because imagine if you're a chef and you open the packaging and everything is kind of intertwined and you wanna get about a handful to use them as a garnish, you would then have to pull them apart and untangle them. And it's not very efficient and you, you don't wanna do that to your chefs, guys, all right? So let's finish off the rest of this broccoli here. When it comes time to packaging it and putting the lid, make sure the micros are nice and tucked. It's all about aesthetics, guys. You are your own quality assurance team. And there you go. Broccoli. Looking nice and clean. Next up is labeling it. So after we have harvested and packaged our broccoli, the next thing to do is get it up for, uh, get it ready for delivery. And so we go up to RJ's awesome tech nerdy station here, uh, where we will go ahead and print some labels. So we'll go ahead and double click on the broccoli two ounce vegetable here. It's gonna open up. Let's go ahead and drag this to the big screen so you guys can see it. And here's the label that we've created for it. All right, so we'll hit print. 
It prints from our nifty brother QL 800 label maker. As you can see, this thing spits it out super quick. So we printed the labels. It's time to slap them on. Make sure that this is straight and even. What have I said in the past? We're our own quality assurance. So unless you guys pay a quality assurance team to double check your work, you are that team. Boom. Look at this. Look at this. Mm. Broccoli microgreens fully packaged and labeled, ready to go. Tell me that doesn't look awesome. Again, make sure you, uh, when you guys are harvesting and packaging them, make sure that the micros are standing up. That's how you get this really nice looking packaging. Um, you don't want it to look like, like that. <laughs> okay, so this is something that you can be proud of when, it, when you go and deliver them. Mm -hmm. That is it guys. That is how you grow broccoli microgreens from start to F and finish, planting them, taking them out of blackout phase, watering them, watering them from start to finish. Remember, I've, I've yelled at you guys on the buckwheat, on the radish, on the spicy salad videos. Make sure that you water these twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Do not slack on this because your micros will, will fail and they will look weak, and that is not something you want, okay? Your, your micros will go from standing straight up to soggy, and that is just the worst thing that can happen, all right? So water your micros. Um, then you harvest them. Make sure you're using that sharp effing knife. I keep yelling at you guys about it. If you guys do choose this method of harvesting with the knife, make sure you have a, a sharp knife, sharp effing knife, okay? If it's too dull, it's just very dangerous. There are other methods. Uh, I think Lewis uses uh, hedge trimmers. So there's there's just other methods out there. But if you wanna use the backyard sprouts method, make sure you use a sharp knife. And then when you package them, make sure you package them standing up. That's how you get that nice looking product. And then slap on those labels from the Brother Qwell printer that we have. And that's it, they're ready to be delivered. So we really do hope you guys appreciate and enjoyed that video. That was a crop focus of broccoli. Alex and I are actually gaining a reputation in Charlotte, North Carolina of having very superior product over our competitors. And that's something that we love and that's something that we hold dear to ours, to us because we're not, <laughs> I, I, probably, I probably sound like a broken record player, but because I, I keep using the same analogies and same ex, same examples over and over. But that's what you get when you're growing microgreens and using the crop focus method all the time. But we're not doing anything special, okay? We're using organic soil and we're watering them using Charlotte, North Carolina City tap water. And yet our product is more superior. Little do they know that we do use the fountain of youth water. Joking, no, you guys have heard us already. If this is the first video you've watched and you haven't seen any of our old other videos, that's it, that's it. That's all we use. We use organic soil and we use tap, tap water, city water. So the only way that our product is lasting weeks and not days compared to others is because our hypothesis like I'm getting scientific there. Our hypothesis is the much, much bigger farms that are acres and acres and acres of field is there, you know, they don't have enough time to do what Alex and I do. It's just too much logistics for them. Alex and I here at Backyard Sprouts, we do grow to order. That is how we ensure the quality of our product. And that's how we ensure that our product lasts weeks on end not days our products literally last weeks if you want me to if you don't believe me i will do a time lapse of how long these things last they're they're not days 
and we've had other people and we supply for several, we supply for high-end level executive chefs and high-end restaurants here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And they all say the same thing, that our product lasts much, much, much longer than the others. And that's because our product doesn't sit in the cooler waiting to get filled, right? We don't mass grow them and shove them in the cooler until a few weeks later, someone places an order for broccoli micros and then we take that one from the cooler. That's not how we do it, we do grow to order. And so that's what we think is happening. We're not bashing on these other big farms. Um, you know, they're much bigger than us, so they don't have as much time as we do. <laughs> but yeah, so make sure you guys water your microgreens, okay? Um, that's my pro tip for today. So we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Crop Focus on our broccoli microgreens. They look super pretty. I can't get enough of them. If you guys have any comments, please put them in the comments section below. We will get to them as quickly as we can. As you guys already know, we are trying to build a community here of like minds. So we'd absolutely love it if you guys haven't already hit that like and subscribe button below so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure. And that's it. That's it. We're closing it out. We will see you guys next time.